Okay, this is uh, Simulink on Subsystems 3. If you haven't watched Subsystems 1 and 2, you need to go back and watch those in order for this to make sense. In Subsystems 1, we showed how to use the um, Subsystem component. And then in Subsystems 2, we showed how we could uh, double click on that and put all kinds of parameters reflecting a DC shunt motor. Armature inductance, armature resistance, uh, torque constant, inertia friction, back EM now. Yeah. And then this little arrow sign here showed me how to get inside my subsystem. And we showed, well, the DC shunt motor is, has inherent feedback in the form of back EMF. That's nothing we need to wire. That's present in a DC shunt motor, back EMF. Okay. So what we want to do now is, um, well, if we run this, we get this plot over here. And the yellow is the step. So we say, okay, come up to a constant speed. And then the DC motor takes about, you know, about two seconds. And then at three seconds, it's pretty much up to a constant speed and stable. Great. So we're basically running a DC motor with no load. Now, what happens if we put some gears on the end of that motor and have it drive some wheels or, or some type of mechanical load? Well, how can we simulate that in um, Simulink? Well, what we can do here is we can go inside our DC motor. Okay, and kind of open it up a little bit more, get some room here. And at this point right here, what I can do is I can go to commonly used blocks and I can drop a summer over here. All right. And what's going to happen, um, I'm going to take another input so I can highlight the armature voltage, press control, left click, and that creates another one of those guys. And I am going to call this uh, a load torque, okay? which is going to model um, a varying load that's connected to the shaft of this DC motor. So we'll just stick that guy right into there. Now the idea here is when I come out of my torque constant, that's the torque that this motor developed. Now if the load torque is zero, then that's kind of like running under no load. But if the load torque is negative, it's going to decrease the amount of torque my system is generating. And then when it goes through the mechanical transfer function, it's not going to be able to rotate as fast or it's going to slow down. Now if I, my load torque is positive, I'm going to increase the amount of torque and it's going to speed up. So by varying this signal on two, I am a simply, essentially in Simulink, modeling a varying load. All right. So now I've got two inputs, one and two, armature voltage, load torque, and then output is omega. And let's see, let's uh, modify omega. This guy here is, you know, RPMs or radians per second. Okay, that's the speed. Okay. Now let's save this and let's go back to the higher level system. And you'll notice now I've got two inputs on this guy. I've got an armature voltage and a load torque. Okay, so now what I want to do is connect the load torque to that, so I can play games and and you know uh, simulate a varying load. And what I can do is I can go to sources. Uh, let's see, signal builder. How about that guy? And there's a lot of ways of doing this. This is just one way, and I can connect that to my load torque. Now let me build a signal that's basically zero. Okay, so I get this guy here, and now notice, this signal currently starts out at zero, at four seconds jumps up to one, and then at six seconds drops down to zero. All right, so let's just make it all zero so we can kind of do a little sanity check. So now I have a torque load that's basically zero going into this, so I should get exactly what I got before. So if I click run, go over to my window, and I get the exact same thing. There's my unit step, my system, motor comes up to speed about two three seconds and then it's running at a constant rpm well let's play some games now let's go into the signal builder and between four and six seconds let's uh oh let's put a little disturbance put some negative torque there okay so negative torque is going to subtract out let's go in the dc motor we're going to get some negative torque that's going to come in here and it's going to subtract from my torque constant, which is going to simulate the effect of a heavy load because we're going to have a smaller torque driving our mechanical transfer function. All right, well, at that point, let's keep an eye on this plot. I wonder if I can have both these guys up here. Let's see if I can uh, shrink this down, move this over. There, I can get both of them on here. All right, let's go ahead and run it now and see what happens. Now, note over here, the motor comes up to speed and stays there. No disturbance. Look what happened now. 
we put a DC voltage on the armature. The motor took about two seconds to come up to speed, stabilizing at a certain RPMs. And at that point, somebody connected a gear and loaded up the shaft of the motor, which caused the RPMs to decrease significantly. At this point right here, when the load was applied, the back EMF decreased. Okay, well, back EMF decreased, then that meant the armature current, which is armature voltage minus back EMF divided by armature resistance, increase. So the armature current's having to increase right here to try to drive that load, and it's able to. It's unable to pull enough current from your source to drive the RPMs at a constant speed, but not the speed you want because you just loaded it up. Right? You load up a shaft, the motor slows down. Then at 6, we remove that disturbance, and then we're able to rotate at the RPMs we want. So the whole point here is that this motor is running an open loop, and it's very sensitive to a varying load. Okay? All right, so let's see. Um, at this point, well, what can we do? Well, um, well, what do they tell you is a good thing to do? Feedback? Yeah, let's try to put some feedback in this system and see what happens. All right, let's put some feedback in the system. Now, let's see. Let me move this guy over here. So how do you do feedback? Well, why don't we just feedback the velocity? I'm going to run this guy down to here since we don't really care about it. What I'm going to do is I am going to delete this guy. And I'm going to put a summer in there. And I want some negative feedback. Because everybody says negative feedback is a good thing. Okay. And let's see, we want negative feedback, so that bottom's going to have to be a minus sign. And then I've got that there. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to feed back the output of this motor, which is RPMs. So I've taken the output, which is RPMs, velocity, and I fed it back and I subtracted it from the input. So I have negative feedback, but my gain h if you will in the g over 1 plus gh model is unity so i have unity feedback okay well let's kind of see what this does now take a look at this picture right here this is not good the motor comes up to speed we apply a load boom the motor slows down we release it well let's run it now with feedback in there and see what happens okay well with feedback the motor came up to speed not where we wanted it but it did stabilize and then at time t equal to four we had a heavy load, okay, when well the motor slowed down. But right here, when you start to see that motor increasing, that's feedback trying to bring it all back up to where it originally was. But we can't bring it back up enough. We can bring it up a little bit, and then we eventually stabilize. And then when that load disappears, that feedback that's trying to bring it back actually causes an overshoot because it's trying to correct too much. And then it says, oh, well, wait a minute, I need, to, I need to back off a little bit because that load is gone, and then it stabilizes again. So you can kind of see the corrective action right here, a feedback trying to bring it back up, and then feedback saying, oops, too much, bring it down. Well, let's see, can we make this a little bit better? Yeah, we can. So really what you've got here is you've got a DC motor, and you've got a controller here. Now, you might have heard the terms PI and D. Well, you can put a P in there, an I there, and a D in there, pr proportional, integral, and derivative controller. Well, here we've got a P controller. Let's increase the gain on our P controller. How about to 10? And let's see, let's save this plot format, and then let's run it again. Oh, look what happens. The motor came up to speed, not quite where we wanted it, but it's up to speed, and then all of a sudden the torque uh, load gets applied. We drop down to here. And then feedback is trying to bring it up. That's the critical part of the graph. Feedback is trying to correct. It can't correct all the way, but it can get it to here. And then when the load disappears, it says, oh, I need to back off a little bit and then get it back to where I'm at. Okay. Now let's see, how can we get the, uh, the, the, the actual torque load in this picture? Let's double click on this guy. And uh, let's run this plot into here so I can see my load, load torque. Okay. And let's run that. And there we go. Yeah, okay, so there you go. So yeah, there's the torque load. You can kind of see that's when we add that disturbance. Well, let's just kind of uh, play with the gain here and see what happens. Put it at 20. Oh, it's actually getting closer, and you can kind of see it's trying to correct and trying to fix itself. And let's apply 40 here. Oh, we're getting up there, but look what's happening. Our rise time, we're getting really, we're responding really quick, but we're getting some nasty overshoot there. 
and then we're stabilizing and then when that load kicks in we correct with some overshoot almost get back to where we wanted to be and then when the load disappears we get a nasty overshoot with some oscillation and then we stabilize so what you're seeing right here is the effect of trying to control a motor closed loop with just gain which would be a proportional controller now you want integral and derivative in there but at this point we just have proportional all right so i think at that point i am going to stop and um, maybe we'll have a subsystems for okay thanks for watching and see you next time